So let's talk about hedging your trade and specifically we're going to talk about what is hedging and what hedging is not and we're going to look at some of the myths of hedging as well. So let's start with answering the question what is hedging? In its simplest form hedging simply seeks to offset the risk of an investment. That's really all it is. When we talk about hedging we're simply taking one risk and we're offsetting it with something else. And so I love this picture over here. It's so comical. Uh, you've got the guys driving his boat off the cliff here and he has a hang glider that takes over. That's kind of comical. And that's kind of what hedging is. It really is. It lowers the risk, but at the same time, it's going to lower your reward because you're carrying more baggage with it. So just imagine, you know, how much more effectively could the guy have gone off the, the waterfall if he didn't have the hang glider, but the hang glider was there to hedge against the risk of the waterfall. So every time you get into a hedge, you're, you're exchanging one thing for something else. You're exchanging some risk. It's going to cost you a little bit more and you're going to consequently have some lower reward, but you're not going to have some of the risk that you would have had if you didn't do the hedge type of a situation. It's a strategic play. We use it to protect it against some sort of an unseen risk or an unseen circumstance. And sometimes we use it to protect against a known risk, something that we see is going to happen. But we say, you know, rather than just getting out of the trade, I'm just going to hedge it and I'll keep the trade open for a little while here. Uh, really, if you were to boil it down to its most basic principles, hedging is insurance. That's really all it is. Hedging is insurance. And we use this in our lives all the time. We just don't think about hedging as insurance and we kind of get spooked by the word. So let's talk about what hedging is not. Hedging is not difficult. It is not reserved for the elite. It is not an exact science. And unfortunately, hedging is not perfect. You'll understand this more in the next class when we talk about more specific hedges. But right now, just understand it's not difficult. It's not reserved for the elite. It's not an exact science and it's not perfect. But what we can do with hedging is we can make a lot of progress. We can get approximate and we can offset a lot of the risk. And that's going to make your trades ultimately, you know, go a little bit smoother and it's going to make you sleep better at night, especially if you're a long term trader. So let's talk about the hedge fund. The hedge fund kind of has a lot of myths around it. And whenever we talk about hedging, a lot of people think, oh, is this what a hedge fund does? Well, kind of, but not specifically. A hedge fund specifically is a pool of funds, very much like a mutual fund. Most people are already familiar with the idea of a mutual fund where you get a bunch of people, you pool your money together, and they invest on your behalf. Well, a hedge fund is very similar. You get a bunch of people, they pull their money together, and then you have a hedge fund manager that manages that money on behalf of the people for whom he's managing the money. Well, the difference here is that the hedge fund is not under the same SEC regulation. It's not scrutinized the same. And because of that, there's a lot of flexibility that hedge funds have that mutual funds do not have. Uh, one of those flexibilities is they can use various instruments. Uh, depending on how the hedge fund is set up, they may specialize in one specific type of instrument. They may speci specify, specialize in short types of funds, or they may specialize in diversity of instruments. Uh, you've seen hedge funds that are out there that are uh, real estate hedge funds. You see hedge funds that are out there that are just futures or commodities based funds. And then you see funds that are out there that do a little bit of everything. And so there's really, it's a garden variety. There's all sorts of different types of hedge funds. But the distinction here is they can do anything in those funds. They can short, they can buy long, they can use options, they can use futures, they can use any type of investment that they want to, so long as it's within the bylaws that they set up for that individual fund. Now, there's an additional distinction here. In order to participate in the hedge fund, you've got to be an accredited investor. This is the distinction right here. Must be an accredited investor. What is an accredited investor? Well, here's how you qualify. First of all, you've got to have a net worth of over a million dollars, not including your primary residence. And you can also qualify if you've got a $200,000 individual income or $300,000 joint income. You have to have had it for at least two years and you've got to expect that income is not going to change in the next year moving forward. And so another way of saying it is an accredited investor, you know, it's going to be the upper echelon. It's the higher percentage earners and it's going to be kind of the top of society. That's why a lot of people think hedging is reserved for the elite because most people think to hedge, you have to be an accredited investor. That's not true, but to participate in a hedge fund, you have to be an accredited investor. Another way of saying it is a hedge fund is, um, you know, the wealthier individuals mutual fund. 
Most people, if they really know what they're doing, would much rather have their, their money managed by a good hedge fund manager than by a mutual fund manager because they have a lot more flexibility. Likewise, there's not the oversight. And so you do hear of a lot more hedge funds going out of business than you hear mutual funds because they have a, a different appetite risk and they don't have the same oversight. So, you know, there's pros and cons, but the big misnomer here and the one that I'm really wanting to address is the issue that hedge funds in and of themselves use the name hedge, but it doesn't specifically mean that they are to hedge your positions. It's just a more you know, glamorous type of, of mutual fund. That's really all it is. And uh, so you've seen some of those distinctions here. Uh, another distinction here uh, I may as well mention to you is that they cannot advertise to general audiences. So you will not turn on your television, say to Fox Business or CNBC and see a bunch of hedge funds soliciting for your business because that would be advertising to a general audience. Uh, but rather hedge funds have some very specific regulations of how they can advertise. And so those are the distinctions that you have with the hedge fund. Now, all of this contributes to the myth of hedging. And, you know, hedging kind of has a certain mystique to it. Part of it is all this random talk about hedge funds. You hear about these, you know, these uh, glamorous hedge fund managers, they ran off and, you know, those are the people that are doing drugs and killing people, blah, 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 all the bad stuff. You know, it's always tied to the hedge funds. So it creates some of this mystique there. Also, you have that mystique of the accredited investor. A lot of people don't understand that. All those wild, scandalous activities. Uh, oftentimes, hedge funds get the blame of a lot of angry talk show hosts. It's not necessarily warranted, but a lot of talk show hosts talk about them badly. Um, and all these different things, you know, they really contribute to that mystique of hedging and to that mystique of the hedge fund. But hopefully what you see here is hedging is not secretive and it's not mythical. And hedge funds really are not mythical. It's just a different type of, of fund that you can pull your money in. And the only thing that's different about it is they can't advertise to the general audience. And, um, you know, they, they require you being an accredited investor. But if you qualify, anybody can go become part of a hedge fund so long as you qualify as an accredited investor. Now, with that in mind, let's also look at some other things here. There's some bad investing or bad hedging wisdom that goes on out there. There's a lot of people that use this term hedge but they really don't mean it in the literal sense. And you'll hear this especially on talking uh, shows, talk shows during the weekend, those financial news talk shows. You'll hear people say, uh, you know, let's go hedge this thing or we need to hedge with X, Y, Z. And what they really mean is they really mean we need to manage or allocate. And there's a very big distinction. Sure, some allocation could be used as a hedge, but it's not hedge in the literal sense that we're going to talk about here. In the literal sense that we're going to talk about, hedging is a direct offset. And so a lot of times you'll hear these words interchange. You'll hear hedge fund. You'll hear people say, oh, you need to hedge it with this or that. And they're really just meaning allocation or managing the funds. And so just kind of, you know, wanted to bring some distinction to those things there so that you understand really what we're talking about. When we talk about hedge, we're specifically talking about using an insurance instrument to offset a lot of your risk there. And so that brings us uh, full circle here. There's a lot of hedging tools that we can use. We can use gold to hedge. A lot of people use gold to hedge a weak dollar. Uh, real estate to hedge inflation. Typically speaking, whenever you have uh, the dollar going down, gold goes up. So that's why that's a hedge. Typically, whenever, whenever inflation's going up, real estate goes up with it, and that offsets all of that. So that's used as a hedge. Uh, futures hedge various risks. Futures are created as a hedge, uh, specifically. Diversification is a type of a hedge. Uh, it's not the best type of a hedge necessarily, but it is a type of a hedge. Uh, some people choose to hedge via sectors. So for example, if you feel like oil is going down, you may buy um, airlines because the airlines will you know, maybe have a better profit as oil goes down. That would be a type of a sector hedging that could take place there. And then of course, options, which is what we're gonna be talking about here. The truth is there's lots of different ways that you can approximate some hedges. Uh, but the idea here is that it's all about you know, specifically offsetting risk. When we think about options as a hedge, options are a very, very versatile hedging tool. Uh, they can be used to hedge stocks, they can be used to hedge indexes, sectors, interest rates. We can actually use options on options. You can use um, options to hedge currency, futures. You can do it with, re with real estate, all sorts of different things that you can use options to hedge. And so options are a very, very good tool. Uh, the truth about hedging is you're already doing it and you don't even realize it though. So this is kind of interesting. Think about insurance 
insurance that you already purchase, homeowner's insurance, for example, renter's insurance, automobile insurance, if you have a boat, maybe you buy boater's insurance, life insurance, health insurance. These are all variations of hedging. We just package it up and call it insurance. And it's all around us. We've even got insurance on insurance. For example, uh, how many of you are familiar with AIG? It was kind of a big deal back in 2008 when they were in the news and the government bailed them out. Well, AIG was insuring the banks back in 2008. And so what did they do? They insured the banks against mortgage defaults. And of course, what happened in 2008, there was a lot of people defaulting on their mortgage, lots and lots of claims. AIG got the short end of the stick. Ultimately, America got the short end of the stick as we bailed them out. And so that was a situation where insurance companies had hedged themselves and AIG was the insurance on, on the insurance there. Uh, most insurance companies are gonna be backed by an additional insurance company or some will be big enough that they will self-insure, but all insurance companies are, they're required to have some sort of additional backing in there. And the theory there is that they won't go broke so they can pay out all of their insurance that they have, uh, have set up there to offset your risk. Uh, but the big, big point here, the idea out of all of this is just that hedging is all around us. It's not mystical, it's not scary. It's relatively easy to understand. The truth is that you participate in it without even realizing you're doing it all the time. It's really not that complicated. It's really at the end of the day, just insurance. And if we were to boil it down into one sentence, hedging is simply investing in one instrument to offset the financial risk of something else. So with that as a setup, let's start talking about how we construct a hedge and get a little bit more detailed with our hedging topic.